Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of OA News Overtime. I'm Jordan Hill with Justin Lee. Jordan. Justin. Is it a Bones Day? It feels like a Bones Day. It kind of feels like a no Bones Day. Yeah. Abby tells me all about Our intrepid intern, Abby, tells me all about. Cool kid a, intern, Abby. Yeah, crank. whether it's a Bones Day or no Bones Day. I don't know. I'm not a TikTok guy. I am dating a TikTok girl. Yeah. Like, she's into it, and I just couldn't care less. I, you know but Lauren, I am aware. I am aware of the Bones Day, no Bones Day. Laura said the other day that her on her phone, TikTok blocks out her clock. So she doesn't know how long she's been on it. Gee, I wonder why it would do It's that. like a casino. Yes. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's definitely unintentional. It's like, a, it's, like, tell me it's like a casino. That's exact, because I swear to you, I will watch. People will just be on it. Yeah. Just, just And be like, 35 minutes just went by. Well, right. Let's do something else. When you could be listening to the OA Now, OA News Overtime Podcast. And like, we're dropping podcasts all the time. I know. If you didn't listen to it, we had the post game press uh, press conference, <laughs> post game podcast, yeah. I should say, after Auburn's big win over Moorhead State. And I think you know we'll try to do that occasionally. Sure. Probably are not going to do it after every uh, men's basketball game. Sure, it was neat and uh, it's exciting to see. This is the very busy part of the year, Justin. You know it as well as I do that uh, you kind of have the the two main sports. Uh, you know, coinciding and, and we have with Auburn football uh, at the stretch run at the Iron Bowls coming up. Mm-hmm. We have Auburn men's basketball starting, and we have high school football playoffs. Yes, and uh, it's uh, an exciting time, but also a draining, debilitating time. It's very busy, but it's uh, it's fun. It's definitely fun. So I would say. Um, To hear most of our men's basketball thoughts, I would recommend going and listening to that podcast. Would a day remove, Justin, anything else that kind of stands out to you or or things that are kind of lingering in your head about last night's game against Moorhead State? No, I'm just excited to see more of it. I'm excited to see excited to see more of Jabari, excited to see how they work him in, you know, just excited to see more of it. And, yeah, I haven't been thinking about or, or, you know, I I didn't really think of it even, but, like – how interesting is it going to be when Allen comes back? Yes. You know, this is only this is phase one of this team. Uh, it's going to hit phase two in conference play when Allen gets back in the lineup. So interesting. Yeah, nothing really else that kind of stands with me that we didn't talk about, other than man, I think Jabari Smith posted the photo of him and Walker going up on a block. Yeah. Like, what are you going to do if you're you're you know trying to work the interior against Auburn? Like. Wing and a prayer. I don't know what else you're going to do. Auburn Twitter resident Callie called that uh, picture the arm barn. Because <laughs> their arms are everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, that's, that's Auburn's version of the arm barn. It's that, that's Jabari and Walker. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You, if you're playing Auburn, I feel like you just want to learn how to shoot threes. Because yeah. you don't want to try to go in and work the paint. Was it five blocks for Walker in his first yeah, game? Yeah. Unbelievable. And had him. I mean, um, the majority of them pretty early on because that, Bro. you know, the first 10 minutes of that first half was like, good God, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> easy. And then – They're and, wiping blood off the wall down here. And then you wear those guys out and uh, stretch and uh, Dylan come in. Yeah. Who are physical specimens. Those, yes. Those are some – those are ripped big kids. Yes. And, uh, yeah, and like you said, now they've got their chance to be, play that Horace Spencer role a little mm. bit, a little bit of physicality. Anyway – and uh, I guess before we talk about football, uh, women's basketball starts Thursday night. Mm-hmm. Uh, first uh, real game they played an exhibition, Georgia Southern. Uh, and then uh, Auburn women's soccer hosting an NCAA tournament game Friday night, 5 p.m. Another big one. Uh, big signing days for every sport except football and men's basketball today. On Wednesday as we record this as I throw my phone. Yes. Uh <laughs> Uh, Go check it out. Look yeah. at your phone. Pull it up on your phone. Yeah, check out. Yeah, and uh, so a lot, a lot of news. Just a busy time. Busy, busy, busy time. Uh, and not least of all, Auburn football trying to bounce back against Mississippi State. Jordan, how was that segue? Before we jump into that, I'm gonna just hit the brakes on it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> But the women's basketball, I just wanted to point out that I'm really interested in that Georgia Southern game because Anita Howard, who coaches Georgia Southern, 
was at Columbus State when I worked in Columbus, and nice. she she did an excellent job turning around that program. Nice. And so it might be a little test for Johnny here. You're gonna say, oh, I think every game is gonna be a test yes. for this for this team. Very uh, very much in build mode. But uh, to circle it back, Johnny Harris, the former Mississippi State assistant, hey! the football team from Mississippi State, hey! since I totally ruined your segue. Sorry, That's Justin. Fine. You're good. Mississippi State at Auburn, 11 a.m. on Saturday. Hold your applause. Um, yeah, it's going to be an early kick. I yeah. know uh, fans aren't excited about that, but I think that they're going to be in for a pretty exciting game. What do, what do you sort of make of this game? Auburn, I believe, is the favorite. I, I, have, I don't remember what the line is. About five or so. Uh-huh. But um, what are your thoughts, especially coming off a Texas A&M game where the offense uh, really never was able to get anything going? Well, the offense has got to play better because the – because, I mean, they're, <laughs> Mississippi State's going to score more than three points. I yes. promise you that. Yes. They will score. Uh, you know, I mean, Auburn's going to need to score 25, probably 30 points to win the game uh, because that's just that's just the, the live and die nature of Mississippi State. Now they'll have a lot of opportunities. Auburn, it's possible Auburn could run 80-plus plays, approaching 90 plays with the way Mississippi State throws it around if you can get some three and outs. Uh, so that gives your offense that opportunity, that many more chances uh, to move down the field and and uh, you know and score. Uh, but yeah, I mean you just got to play better. But it's this is one of those where uh, you know we talked about you know that old Miss game. This is a game you expect Auburn to win. This is a game where uh, Auburn has a steep talent advantage uh, from top to bottom. If if you subscribe to recruiting rankings, which you should, <laughs> and uh, and uh, um, yeah, I mean that's just kind of what I make of it. Uh, it's just gonna depend on whether Auburn has its stuff together or not, mm. and it might not. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be... Didn't have it together last Saturday? No. Heck no. No, I mean, the offense cannot afford to replicate what happened at Texas A&M or truly what didn't happen at Texas A&M because right. this offense is going to score. To me, you know, we'll get into our predictions later, but I think what will very likely be Auburn's saving grace is I think this defense may have sort of a – uh, a big moment in that I think they may force some turnovers. Will right. Rogers has played really well. As Brian Harson has repeated ad nauseum this week, he's completing <laughs> 75% of his passes. Sure. Uh, which is, which truly is remarkable in the air raid. I mean, sure. because that's, I mean, he, he leads the nation in pass completion percentage. Right. Um, and I think the offense will be able to respond. Mm -hmm. I'm not convinced that the run game is going to be there because Mississippi State, even though a lot of the time they've ran three-man fronts, they've done a really good job of stopping the run. Right. I think that it's going to be kind of on bow and, and these receivers. I think that they're going to have to have a game where I don't think you're going to want to play an air raid style where Bo throws 55 times. I don't think that's what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. But you need to create explosive plays through the passing game. Right. You've got to be able to convert on third down, two things that they were not able to do in College Station. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, you're looking at a Mississippi State team that could very well win this game. And then mm – -hmm. Man, imagine if that happens and just the, the total 180 from what yep. we were talking about two weeks ago. With, yep. Yeah, I mean, it, it would be a drastic change uh, given where the team sat a couple weeks ago. Well, I'll tell you what, Jordan, it could happen. Mississippi State doesn't need to have a good defense. This offense sputtered against Georgia State. Yes, it did. Okay? It did. And no one wants to – everyone wants to forget that. Everyone wants to go, oh, that's ancient history. There's nothing going on. But, hey, man, that's the reality. That's where your players are. That's where your coaches are. Yeah. They've had bad games against bad teams. Mm. And uh, now they've had a bad game against a good team. Mm -hmm. Now they, they've got to come back and have a better game uh, against Mississippi State. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I mean, that's just what we're, we're going to be watching. Um, so, I mean, you, you, you would think they'll be able to reset, hit the reset button. They've done it before this season. You know, right after that embarrassing game against Georgia State, they went down and beat LSU. Mm. Um you know, which is not as bad of a win as people thought. Yeah. Uh, the volatility of this football season, man. Every, For everybody. Everybody almost. except one school, Georgia Bulldogs. Yes. Everyone else going up and down and up and down. Alabama at six rushing yards. What is happening? Total uh, utter chaos. Yeah, yeah. So in that way, Auburn, you're not alone. Yes. But uh, but but you got stuff you got to work on, man. And things are not. I know everyone wanted after the old Miss game, for everything to be sunshine and rainbows. But uh, it's not. And a reality check, 
came the teams away in College Station. We'll see if they're able to respond this week. Uh, we'll get into the conversation with the Mississippi State beat writer Stefan Kreischnick. Had a chance to talk to Let's him. Do it. This Let's learn week. more about this Mississippi State team, Jordan. Stefan from the Northeast Mississippi Daily Journal was nice enough to take some time, talk about Mississippi State, sort of the expectations, and um, sort of where this program is in year two of Mike Leach. So, uh, very fun conversation, and we'll throw it to Stefan. And we're going we're gonna to do our picks after, so yes, stick around. Yes, we'll do picks, and then, I mean, we will talk to Stefan, then yeah. we, we will do our picks. So, let's throw it to Stefan. Well, Stefan, we're getting ready for a big game on Saturday. Mississippi State coming to Auburn. Uh, just tell me a little bit about this Mississippi State team. They're coming off a close loss to Arkansas. Where do you feel like this team is right now and, and sort of how the 2021 season has played out for them? Yeah, I think uh, all the discussion right now is about Mississippi State's kicking and their special teams. Um, but, but to get to this point where Mississippi State is competing in games, you know, at Arkansas and winning games at Texas A&M and and beating Kentucky, um, you, you kind of look at early in the season and where this team has grown. It really was, um, it still is a young team, um, you know, in the second season of the Mike Leach tenure that, that had a lot to learn on both sides of the ball because that defense, you know, Zach Carnett is only in his second year as defensive coordinator um, with the system that he brings in. On both sides of the ball, you got a lot of young players who are trying to learn a new system. And at the early part of the season, you saw a lot of the same struggles from last year. Some strides, but still some of those struggles that, that still existed. And and, you know, that's kind of epitomized through Will Rogers at quarterback. Um, but, but Mississippi State's really developing into a good team now, one that, um, you know, when they lose games, like you saw against Arkansas, it comes down to a couple of mistakes they made. But you kind of look at it and you're like, well, that's a young team that if they stop making those mistakes, um, you know, let's say next year or the year after, it's a team that, that can contend for some pretty high, you know, bowl presence. And, um, and that, that's kind of where they've been to this point. It, it, it's a good team that can beat. You know, aside from Alabama and Georgia, it feels like it's a team that can beat almost anyone, whether it be at home or on the road, depending on, you know, the, the own, own mistakes they made. So it definitely sets up for, you know, an interesting matchup this Saturday, um, you know, where, where Auburn is coming off that loss and, and Mississippi State obviously coming off a tough loss, too. And, you know, both teams will be fired up and, and want to get back in the win column. I mean, it's a pretty big game in terms of the SEC West standings and how things kind of shake up with, with each team's schedule the rest of the way. Uh, so let me ask you this. How, how does Auburn kind of match up with, with Mississippi State, you know, coming off that loss, facing this air raid offense? How, how, how do they kind of match up? It's a very interesting kind of turn of events. We, uh, Me and my boss, Justin Lee, who does the podcast with me, I feel like every week we'd be like, all right, this is the game. This is where we're going to learn something about this team. <laughs> really, And we felt like we had coming out of that old Miss game. And then they just, you know, there's no other way to say it, but the Auburn offense completely laid an egg in College Station, couldn't really move the ball, had very few explosive plays, didn't find the end zone. And going back to that old Miss game, they've played six quarters now without an offensive touchdown. And they got very lucky in that they're, the defense has played great, uh, played really well in the second half against Ole Miss, played great against Texas a &M. You know, if you would have told me coming out of that Texas a &M game, that Auburn is not going to let the Texas A&M offense score a touchdown. I'd be like, wow, Auburn Auburn went into College Station and they won. That's really impressive. Not, not so fast. Uh, a lot of field goals and then a uh, Bo Nix scooping a fumble that led to a defensive scoop and score, and that was enough for Texas A&M. So, yeah, it's, a, it's been another weird pivot point in this season uh, where it seemed like momentum was kind of building for Auburn and, you know, people were saying, and it was very realistic at the time, that, you know, oh, this could be, this could make for a winner-take-all Iron Bowl. If Auburn had, you know, run the run the table from uh, the last few games, and, and then you got Mississippi State this week, then South Carolina, and then if Alabama kept winning, then you're looking at that Iron Bowl as whoever wins goes to SEC West. Auburn technically still has that possibility, but they're going to need help probably from Ole Miss to beat Texas A&M to set up something like that. Uh, but, yeah, it's a very weird pivot point, and it's a very interesting opponent in Mississippi State and a team that we know could put up a lot of points. Quite frankly, Auburn can't afford to come into this game and struggle on offense. They may wind up be, you know, be playing from behind, which I don't think the way – um, the offensive lines played, the way Bo played last week, the way the receivers honestly have played all year is really something they can afford. If they're trying to play catch up, more likely than not, it's not going to work out in Auburn's favor. Uh, looking at this game, I wanted to ask, 
I was kind of uh, surprised when I was looking at the numbers getting ready for this week, just how good Mississippi State's run defense has been. And I think probably their defense as a whole, just what has stood out to you about how they've played on defense and, and how it's kind of gotten Mississippi State to this point in the season? Right, yeah. The, the defense as a whole, you know, I will say the one flaw is the explosive plays they've given up every now and then in the, in the past game. And, and a lot of that could be the result of why their run defense is so good is when you're, you're, you're coming up, teams notice that. They can kind of try to expose you, you know, with some struggles that you've had at safety. So I'll, I'll say the overarching kind of issue with defense has been that. Um, the run defense, like you said, has been really good. Last week, I think they gave up 200-plus rushing yards to Arkansas, but that's kind of what every team has done this season against Arkansas. Um, you know, if you want to look at some of Mississippi State's better performances, um, you know, NC State, really good running team, and Kentucky, really good running team that Mississippi State, you know, held to less than 100 yards or somewhere close to that range. Um, the, the reason is that, you know, up front, they've got big guys in the middle who can kind of stuff the middle for you, and they've got good defensive ends that can kind of shut off the, the sides and linebackers that can kind of hit those gaps. That's kind of the number one thing in stopping the run game. But another thing they have is in their cornerbacks – Manuel Forbes and Martin Emerson, not only are they really good in coverage, but they're also really good tacklers. And, and they found ways to kind of get involved um, in the running game where, you know, if, if a running back breaks that first layer, it's really rare that they get to the second or third or uh, get past the second layer, I should say, um, in, in that run defense. And that's where the cornerbacks have kind of come in and made a little bit of a mark in that um, aspect as well. So, yeah, it, it's a really good run defense. Um, and, and I'm interested to see how Auburn – um, you know, kind of matches up with that. I, I know, I, I think I just saw you and actually wrote about this, but, you know, in the Texas A&M loss, how much of the blame with that offense do you feel is fair to put on Bo Nix and how much of it is just kind of the offense as a whole just failing in that game completely? I think, honestly, the blame kind of goes all the way around, and that's something that Brian Harson kind of talked to us about on Monday. I think it's very fair to criticize the way Bo played. I don't think it was one of his better games. It was the second lowest completion percentage he had all year. It's the lowest complete uh, yards per completion. It was like 3.7 yards. That's the lowest of his three-year career at Auburn. So he did not play well. But, you know, for the most part, the offensive line was okay. But, you know, they had their moments where they weren't able to pass protect the receivers, which has been really going back to the preseason. That was our biggest question mark was who's going to step up. Auburn had lost their top three receivers from 2020 who's going to step up. And you've had a few guys here and there, but not consistently. And against a and they really struggled with creating separation. Um, you know, and they they really just were a non-factor. The leading receiver among the wide receivers in that game had two receptions for eight yards, which is not uh, a winning formula. You know, Bo threw to the running backs a lot, threw to tight end John Samuel Shanker. I think it was just a dud all the way around uh, for the offense. We had some people like on Twitter, and there was a question in the post-game press conference about pulling Bo Nix uh, for T.J. Finley, which is what they did in that Georgia State game. That didn't happen, and, you know, that was something that Brian Harson made it sound like, you know, was never really considered. Uh, but it was just – it was a failure on the offense as a whole. I, I think it wasn't one person or, or another. And, and we knew that that, that Texas a and defense was very good. But, you know, kind of coming into that game, I think we thought – well, Auburn's got momentum, and I think they've turned the corner on offense. And then, you know, I mean, it's fair to keep in mind that, well, some of that success was against defenses like Ole Miss and Arkansas, who aren't quite at the caliber of a Texas a &M. So, uh, So, yeah, it was a very eye-opening game against Texas A&M, and, and it kind of leads into a really interesting matchup with Mississippi State. Um, you mentioned Will Rogers earlier and had a chance to ask Brian Harson just sort of, about his impressions, and he sounded very impressed with what he's seen from Will. Uh, what has sort of stood out to you about his play? I saw where he's completed, I think, like 75% of his passes. Just what do you think has worked for Will uh, in his second year getting to work with Mike Leach? Yeah, I think you're definitely seeing that that with experience and more time, whether it be in the offseason or just in practice, um, that, that it's paying off. And that's kind of what you would hope for, you know, a quarterback in his second season. He's only got about – you know, the, the, when that, when they played Alabama about a month ago, that was his 12th, you know, regular season start. So he's only about got about one season and four games, you know, worth of starts under his belt because KJ Costello, um, you know, had some of those reps last season as, as a starting guy. You know, he's he's just becoming a, a lot more poised in the pocket. Earlier in the earlier in the season, there were times where he would just hold the ball too long and 
and the offensive line will look a little worse just because, you know, he holds the ball too long. And he still does that at times because um, he's not very, very mobile guy. But he's kind of, you know, he showed in that last drive against Arkansas that, that he's not afraid to kind of step up in the pocket or maybe flush out of the pocket a little bit um, to kind of create plays and give himself some more time and give that offensive line some more time. And along with that, I think his receivers are kind of learning how to read defenses a little better. Rodgers has learned how to check plays um, better at the line. You've seen the past couple of weeks, um, Mississippi State's run the ball a decent amount as well. And I think a lot of that is Rodgers. Um, recognizing what the defense is presenting. I think just just him getting to know Mike Leach and Mike Leach getting to know him and them kind of being comfortable with each other and talking to each other and watching film together, um, you're seeing the benefits now. It, it seems like the sideline and the quarterback are in sync in what they want to do, um, and it's paying off. I mean, the numbers obviously are going to be skewed because of how many times he throws the ball, but he's going to break about every Mississippi State passing record this season so long as he stays healthy. Um, for a sophomore, that's still pretty impressive. I mean, he could have came out in this offense, thrown the ball 50 times a game and been terrible. He could have had like five interceptions a game. And, 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 I, and I think that maybe would have even been reasonable. Um, but, he, but he's taking care of the ball. He's making the smart reads. And, and you know, the records that he's going to break are, are pretty well deserved. Um, he's really grown kind of in front of everyone's eyes this season. And, you know, maybe in the early part of the season, people were kind of frustrated with how Rodgers would fit into the system. And now at this point, you're kind of looking at it, you're like, Will Rogers is probably part of the reason Mississippi State has stayed in some of the games that that it's been in. So, um, yeah, his development has been uh, really exciting for Mississippi State fans. And, you know, Sawyer Robertson is a freshman, um, you know, behind him who's got some high expectations. He's, you know, he's one of Mike Leach's guys that people are kind of hoping would, would take over the next couple, of, maybe even next season. But Will Rogers is making that tough now. And, and as a sophomore, it's, it's hard to imagine – with the growth that he's shown that Will Rogers isn't making a case to be a, a starting quarterback for Mississippi State next year and the year after. So um, he's, he's just growing up as the season goes on. Um, and, and, and learning that Mike Leach system has been really beneficial for him. Kind of ties into why, what I wanted to ask you. You know, we saw last season with Mississippi State the struggles of, of learning a new system, bringing in a new head coach. Few coaches kind of bring in the complete flip that, you know, Mike Leach system will bring. Um, but with Harsey, you know, his first year, it's been, it seems like it's been a pretty successful one. And I know a lot of people had low expectations for the program. I know my, I myself didn't think Auburn was going to be as good as it is right now. What, what do you think, you know, Harson has done and what's kind of been the perception of him, you know, throughout the, the Auburn fan base? Yeah, you know, I think it was interesting when he was hired. I want to give credit to my boss, Justin Lee, when we, uh, you know, ran the story that he had been officially hired. The headline was out of the blue which was obviously he's from Boise, but <laughs> really, we really had no idea that Brian was sort of, you know, being targeted or, and ultimately wound up getting the job. So I think people came into the season with cautious expectations about what to see. I think they knew that there was a lot of talent coming back on both sides, but some, some real question marks receiver offensive line. Uh, and a question mark with the secondary, just a matter of who would wind up uh, filling some of those roles and, and who would kind of rise to the occasion. And, you know, coming into the year, I think I said eight and four. And it seems like that's kind of the trajectory that they're looking at. Uh, you know, didn't see them needing like I play at the very end to beat a Georgia State team. But also, you know, looking at how they played against Georgia, you know, they still lost by 24, but they may have so far put up the best game against anybody, uh, maybe but besides like Kentucky. Uh, as far as who's played Georgia this year. Um, the biggest thing I think that has worked to Brian Harson's benefit is trying, especially on offense, to put guys in position to succeed uh, and, and give guys the opportunity um, to excel. And, and I think that you saw that specifically with Bo Nix after the Georgia State game. That Georgia State game, I think he was credited with two carries, and I think you know, some of those might have just been either sacks or, you know, scrambles. There, there was not a lot of design runs. And that's something that in the past when Brian was at Boise, he didn't really have a ton of scrambling quarterbacks. I mean, it was pocket guys and, and working with that. And I really think that after that Georgia State game, whether it was a conscious effort by Brian Harson and offensive coordinator Mike Bobo, or if it was even something that Bo Nix decided on his own, they kind of freed up Bo. And you saw that in the LSU game. He scrambled around like he was Michael Vick and Madden 04. I mean, just he made plays happen. And that's when Bo's at his best, is when he is given the opportunity uh, to kind of freelance and kind of improv on plays and make stuff happen. Because uh, his legs really are um, a, a true benefit for him. He, he's a fast guy when you can kind of 
put that element into the offense, it, it works out. And, you know, it kind of set up what was the strongest month of his career so far at Auburn. Uh, but then you had sort of the step back against a &M. But, yeah, I mean, talking about Brian Harson, uh, he's really preached, you know, at least with the media, and I'm sure it's the same with his players, a one and no mentality of kind of, you know, not overthinking things. And um, yeah, it's worked for the most part. And, and it is funny to look across college football right now. I think, uh, I know before the A&M game, and I think it's still the case, that he has the best record among first-year head coaches. Um, so a lot of credit to him because there's a lot of questions. This is a guy that had never coached in the SEC, um, had really only coached in the Southeast or, um, you know, in the South a, a year at Arkansas State and two years as an offensive coordinator at Texas. So very limited experience, but they've done really well. Um, they've done a good job of, you know, kind of setting the groundwork for what they want this program to be. The biggest question that still remains uh, as far as the, the trajectory of the program is just recruiting. Uh, they've struggled so far to kind of make inroads and that's gonna, you know, that still remains the biggest question is if he's gonna be able to get guys in here because Auburn right now has a very unfortunate situation of uh, their two rivals right now are the powers in the SEC, it's Alabama and Georgia and Auburn's caught right there in the middle. So they've got to figure out a way to keep up uh, because that's the name of the game. But uh, yeah, Brian, I think has done a very good job in his first year, but uh, the question sort of remains what's gonna come next. Uh, so I want to look to this game on Saturday. What do you feel like are going to be the keys from the Mississippi State perspective? What do you think needs to happen for Mississippi State to have a chance to pull off a big road win? Yeah, I think what needs to happen first and foremost is going to be, you know, a lot less mistakes on Mississippi State's part. And that probably begins with, with the special teams. Um, I know a lot of Mississippi State, you know, fans kind of laughed at Harson's comment yesterday that Mississippi State's, you know, special teams are solid. I think those were his words because um, they're really not and they really struggle quite a bit. Um, and I and I, you know, I get where a coach kind of says that. But, um, you know, the the penalties um, and, and the punt coverage and, you know, obviously the kicking game have all been struggles. And, you know, in an environment like that, um, against a team like Auburn, you're, it, you can't get away with that, no matter how good you are on offense or on defense. Um, you know, that's kind of going to kind of be the name of the game for Mississippi State. It's going to be really interesting to see um, what Mississippi State decides to do in, in fourth down situations, especially in field goal range. Um, because, you know, if they do have some walk-on kicker right now, you know, trying out on the practice fields, he's probably not going to be eligible to play Saturday. Um and I can't imagine the confidence of the two kickers that you do have right now is, is very high after Leach's comments. Um, you know, and, and Leach said yesterday that, um, you know, at, at Washington State, his teams were usually toward the top of the nation in terms of going for it on fourth down. Obviously, when you have an offense like that, it's not, you know, not really much of a decision to make. Um, this season, they're towards the bottom with, I think they've only gone for it, you know, six times on fourth down all season. Um, I think that's going to change. I think Mike Leach is going to be a lot more aggressive. Um, you know, they're going to go for it on fourth downs. And, and that's the type of thing where if you're going to play like that, um, you know, you can't be the sloppy offense that showed up in the first quarter against Arkansas. You know, you, you can't be the sloppy offense that showed up for, you know, large stretches in the middle of that Memphis game. Like, you need to be on top of it. Otherwise, it's, you know, going for it on fourth down there, just a glorified punt, you know, in field goal range. So it, it, it's going to be interesting to see – what Miss or what Mississippi State itself does? It's a tough opponent, and I'm not taking away anything from Auburn. But if Mississippi State plays its game, it can beat Auburn, um, and I'm sure Auburn would say the same thing about facing Mississippi State. But if you're going to make you know mistakes on your part and turn the ball over and have penalties on special teams, and and you know the, the special teams penalties sometimes get overlooked, but you know a false start on a punt moves you back five yards. The next thing you know, you know instead of Auburn being at the Mississippi State 40, they're at midfield. And it all makes a difference in the grand scheme of things. It makes it easier to score, and, and those points end up stocking up. So, um, yeah, it, I think the most important thing is Mississippi State kind of evaluating itself. And, and that kind of sounds like coach speak, and I think every coach would probably tell you going into the game, well, what matters most is what we do. Um, but, but in Mississippi State's sense, aside from that Alabama game, when you look at how they've lost um, the three other games, it's them been shooting themselves in the foot. So that's, that's kind of the one thing of – it comes down to penalties. It comes down to mistakes. Um, and speaking of mistakes, the one thing I wanted to ask you, I think was most important is, um, you know, a few years back when Mississippi State faced Auburn, 
Um, the eagle that goes, you know, flying through before the game, I think like crashed into the press box window or something like that in a, in a game against Mississippi State. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, is this is today or sorry, is Saturday going to be um, the last game for this current Eagle? I, I kind of read something about that. There, there's a lot of talk about the Eagle in this game against Mississippi State. Yeah, yeah, I believe it's Spirit. I think Spirit is the one that's getting right because they fly a couple of them, Spirit, and I think the other one is Independence. Yeah, I think this is her last game. So, you know, I mean, maybe she she could have, you know, the, the thought of uh, – you know, like a pilot who comes over the intercom as you take off, like, hey, this is my last flight. And it's like, you could have just told us that afterwards. You're like, yeah, either way, whether we make it there or not, this is going to be my last flight. But <laughs> you mentioned that, and I immediately thought when you were talking about mistakes, um, a couple of years ago when uh, the uh, Mississippi State Bulldog almost got ran over, I think that was Jatarvius Whitlow that almost hit him on the sideline. Yeah. Always all kinds of weird animal shenanigans, I guess, in this game. <laughs> um, I wanted to kind of give just a perspective from the Auburn side as far as what I expect or what needs to happen. And I think it's it kind of starts and ends with the receivers. I think that Auburn's passing game, I think, is going to be relied on. I think we've gotten to the point where we just got to say that this run game isn't what we expected it to be. Um, they had the blip where they played really well and Tank Bigsby ran for like 140 yards against Ole Miss. But for the most part, this run game has just not been able to get going, and I'm not convinced it's going to be able to against a really good Mississippi State a run defense. So I think it's on guys like Kobe Hudson and Chedrick Jackson, two guys who have had moments but have still kind of lacked consistency. I think Kobe's probably been the most consistent receiver. Um, but I think those guys have to get something going. I think they've got to find a way – to get the tight ends involved because that's been a really nice sort of blanket for Bo Nix is, you know, he could rely on John Samuel Shanker, the starting tight end. And, and they've gotten a few other tight ends involved as well. Uh, but it's kind of been the catch 22 these last few weeks of where they've really needed those tight ends to stay in to, to pass protect. But then that's a, you know, a reliable person in the passing game that can't go out on routes. Uh, so that's sort of my key uh, is that the receivers are going to have to step up. And, and I meant to ask you this a minute ago, Stefan, and, and I'll throw in mine as well. If you've got a prediction on this game, go for it. And if not, I can offer up mine. Oh, yeah. I haven't really thought about that yet. You know, I'll, I'll go with – I think Auburn is going to win the game, um, which is a bad thing for Auburn fans because I've been wrong on just about every Mississippi State prediction this year just because of how crazy this team has been. Um, but I think Auburn ends up ends up coming out on top. I'll say 28 to 21. Um, I don't think we're going to see many field goals in this game. So, <laughs> Yeah, probably not from the Mississippi State side, at least. I was going to ask you if you had any eligibility, and they might be. Really <laughs> ben, you know Ben Portno, who covers South Carolina now. Um, yeah. He texted me, and he was like, why don't you go try out? And I was like, I guess I do have eligibility to left, but I, you know, I can't really kick a ball more than 10 feet in the air, I think. So uh, probably – Probably not, you know, the best option for Mississippi State, but, I mean, I guess if they really needed someone and could offer me, you know, a scholarship, I'll go get my master's or something while I'm here. You could uh, you could get a heck of a book deal out of it, I think, <laughs> to make for a good opportunity. Uh, I think oh. I, I talked to Theo DeRosa, given my prediction earlier. Uh, I think I'm going to pick Auburn 31-20. I think it's going to be a pretty close game. But I, I still really believe in this defense. This defense has played really, really well. Um, played well throughout that AM game and for the most part in games before that played excellent second halves and I think we might see that on Saturday we might see some explosive plays from Mississippi State early might see Rodgers kind of you know work on a secondary that lost its safety in the Ole Miss game one of its safeties in the Ole Miss game and and they they played well the, the guys that stepped up without uh, Zion Puckett uh, they played well in at the AM game but I think they're vulnerable there and if you want to be vulnerable anywhere against an air raid, I don't think secondary. Is worth <laughs> so I think that Mississippi State's going to make some plays. They may even have the lead at halftime, uh, but I think Auburn's going to settle in and, and be able to win this one in the second half. Yeah, no, it should be interesting. Does that 20 points come from uh, two touchdowns and two field goals or a missed extra point? Probably a missed extra point. <laughs> That's going to, and I think you may get to hear about it uh, if I had to guess in the post game. Yeah, I'm sure we will. <laughs> well, uh, Stefan, I really appreciate the time. I did want to make sure for the people who are listening to our podcast, watching it, 
um, let them, let them know where you can, where they can follow you, um, stories you're working on this week, your website, uh, you know, where they can check out your Mississippi State coverage. Yeah, um, our website is djournal.com, uh, and um, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at skrajic3, S-K-R-A-J-I-S-N-I-K-3, sure, you just spell that out. Um, if you're, you know, a person that's really interested in Mississippi State, we have a Facebook group, uh, Mississippi State Discussion with Stefan Kreisnick and Parrish Alford. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm working on a story right now of uh, Matt Williams, who's a kicker at um, Texas Tech. He won um, free rent because he came on the field during the third quarter and kicked a 30-yard field goal, like during a Texas Tech game um, in 2008. And Mike Leach was on the sideline and he was like, hey, go get me that kid. So literally a strength coach went and ran him down. and was like, Mike Leach wants you to try out. The kid had kicked in high school a little bit and kind of had some, you know, low um, college experience, but, you know, ultimately wanted to just be a student at Texas Tech. Leach brought him in and um, he ended up kicking for, for Texas Tech for about two and a half, three years. So um, pretty great story. I'm looking forward to doing that. I talked to Matt yesterday, so it uh, should be fun. And, um, you know, like you mentioned, anyone that wants to follow along with our coverage, please do. I'd appreciate it. Highly recommend it. it. was fun. I really appreciate the time. Appreciate you giving us a little bit of your time and uh, looking forward to seeing you on Saturday. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. What's that? What's that? Why? It's our 50th episode. Oh. Hello. Sarah P. Yes. You're on the podcast. You're on the LA News Overtime podcast. Did you know that we are at episode 50? Congratulations! So yeah. proud. Well, I, we're proud of you, Sarah. But you started this. Sarah, thing. this was your this was your baby. This is your baby. It was not my baby. Well, but yes, you were involved. All right. Any thoughts? My brainchild. From- yeah. 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 Any, yeah. Any any thoughts? Anything for the viewers? Um. No. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to be quiet because the Auburn Observer is about to record their podcast. Oh, oh I see. I see. Plugging I see. another podcast. I see. I see. I see. Well, all right. Well, uh, for this po- podcast, wow, I miss Auburn Arena is my yeah. thoughts. Yeah, Sarah P. wasn't there with us last night when Auburn uh, men's basketball had its season opener. Well, well, you'll be back soon, Sarah, and we'll see you when you visit. Yeah, absolutely. Bye, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Congratulations on your 50th episode of your podcast. Thank you. He says hello as well. Thank you. Tell Kiki hello. There we go. How about that? Yeah. Jake Weiss brought it up. 50 episodes for OA News Overtime. Which was 47 more than I expected. (laughs) Oh, sorry. So we had to call Sarah P. Sarah Polcheski, who 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 was the original host. Yeah, the original. Trivia. (laughs) Sarah Polcheski originally hosted this show. Yeah. So there we go. That was our 50th episode celebration. That was great. All right. You know how we're also going to celebrate? Yeah, making picks. Making picks. (laughs) It's high school playoffs. There's some big games in the area. We're going to start uh, with Class 7A. These will be the quarterfinals games, and I added all four quarterfinals games. Yes. So we're going to start with the two local ones. Theodore at Central Phoenix City. I'm going with the Red Devils. Central. Phoenix City. Alabama. Yeah, yeah. Central with the, should should roll. Yes. Enterprise at Auburn High. I think that could be a sneaky game. Yeah. Enterprise has got a chance. I'm going to pick Auburn. It's hard to beat a team twice in one season, but I think Auburn High does it. All right, yeah, played Enterprise already and uh, playing really well after that IMG Academy game. And I think they took that loss the right way. I think the team understood that that was a good showing despite a loss because it's IMG Academy. Mm-hmm. Give me Auburn High. Give me a Auburn Central semifinal. Yeah, let's do it. For a third and year in the row. On the other side, Hewitt Trustful at Hoover. I think that could be a game that could go either way. I'm going to go with the Buccaneers of Hoover. Hoover. Hoover Bucks. That's the pick. Oak Mountain at Thompson. I'm picking Thompson. I think we'll get a Thompson-Hoover uh, rematch to see who's going to Birmingham. Thompson all the way. Yeah, Thompson again. That'll be another. Uh, for each of the last two years, the semifinals have been Central Auburn High and uh, Hoover-Thompson. Uh, and I, I predict for the third year in a row we'll go to Chalk, and that'll be the Final Four again. I agree. Spanish Fort at Opelika in the second round of the Class 6A playoffs. I'm going to go with Spanish Fort pulling off the road. Oh, win. my gosh. Wow. Give me the Bulldogs. Man, Opelika's been to the third round, I think, like five straight years. Something like that. Eric uh, Speakman's done a very good job. It's just a matter of uh, matter of in, in the playoffs. It's they've They have had days where their offense is 
you know, hot and days when the offense is struggling. So they got to have more hot days than, than – you can't have any more cold days no. in the playoffs. Uh, I'm going to say the Bulldogs have one more hot day, get to the third round yet again. Laverne at Lynette in the Class 2A playoffs. I'm going to take the Panthers of Lynette. Lynette all the way. Lynette, a little low scoring in their first round game, but maybe that's the wake-up call they needed. Lynette. Class 1A, Notasolga at Keith. I want to pick my Blue Devils, but oh! I'm going to pick Keith, the home team, to put out the Blue Devils. I will take the Blue Devils. Wow, defense wins championships. Yep. I have to catch Jordan in the standings, so I'm going to go with Notasolga too. There we go. Glenwood <laughs> at Pike Liberal Arts in the AISA Class 3A semifinals. Semifinals. So these are Final Four games. This is a rematch of last year's state championship game, and I think Pike gets it done again, puts out Glenwood. I'll go Pike as well. I was a little surprised. I think we all picked Morgan Academy last week, right? So I was thinking about taking Glenwood, but I'll take Pike. Glenwood had a tough year, man. I mean, they had like four regular season losses, all of them to the top ten, three of them to the top three, uh, and here they are playing like number one or two again. Uh, I think it's just going to be – it's just a tough year for Glenwood. Now, I'm going to pick Pike Lib, but Glenwood, really good football team. Tough breaks all year. Lee Scott Academy at Tuscaloosa Academy. Tuscaloosa. Auburn versus Tuscaloosa. Who, wow. Tuscaloosa, I don't know if you saw, is going to be moving into AHSA in a couple of years. Oh, are they? Yes, they are leaving AISA. Going to be a tough challenge. I think Lee Scott's got a chance, but I'm going to pick Tuscaloosa at home. I'll take Lee Scott. Wow, on the road, man. That would be massive to send the Warriors to their first state championship, as far as I know. In quite a while. Certainly. Since like 2011 or so. Okay. Tuscaloosa Academy, though, I'm going to pick them at home. Home, t- home field advantage makes a difference. AISA Class 1A, Escambia Academy at Chambers Academy. This is for a spot in the state title game. I've learned not to go against the Rebels. They're going to keep it going, and, <laughs> and they have got a dynasty. They have gone yep. to several state championships in a row, and I don't think that's going to end this year. I think it'll be close, but Chambers looked good all year. They're going to keep looking good. Chambers Academy uh, going back to state once again. College games now. Michigan at Penn State. This is a pick em right now, but I'm going to pick the Wolverines. Michigan. What time is this game? <laughs> You know, I think it's a nooner. I don't know that for a fact. I don't know why you ask me stuff when we are on the podcast. I completely, I completely, it completely depends. All right, let's go to the next one. I need to know the, I need to know when it is. Georgia at Tennessee, that is the 3:30 CBS game. I'm going to pick Georgia. I think Tennessee covers the 20 points. Really? Uh, I can see that actually as well. I'll take Georgia. Georgia. Oh, 11 a.m. Give me, give me the road team. Give me Michigan. Okay. They don't have that night game advantage. Michigan. Texas A&M at Ole Miss. This is the game where Auburn and okay. its fans need to be big Rebels we, fans. Yeah, we need to talk about this for just a second. Yes. This is the imaginary scenario that I've been kicking around for like a month now. Doomsday scenario. <laughs> yeah, the thought that Auburn could still lose to Texas A&M. If they can get Ole Miss to beat Texas A&M, go paper, rock, scissors, Auburn can still, if it beats Mississippi State, beat South Carolina, get to the Iron Bowl, and be winner take off for the division title. You want that if you're Auburn. Uh, you erase that misses that uh, Texas a and loss. You're rooting for Lane Kiffin and Matt Corral because this is the game that can get you back in it. Uh, so, yeah, who are we picking? I'm picking Texas a and Oh, don't my think. God, break your up there. After all of that, oh, I'm picking Texas a and What's the spread? I don't know. I don't know. This is a tough one. I mean, this is a really tough one. Ole Miss has got a great offense. a and I mean, we all saw it last week. That defense, that defense is good. I'm going to go with the Aggies, though. Give me Lane Kiffin at home, throwing oh, the clipboard. Auburn Jesus. Punt it into the stands. Texas A&M's offense, or defense is really good. Auburn's offense had a really bad game. Both can be true at the same time. I think that defense is solvable with a really good offense, and Ole Miss has one. Arkansas at LSU, I'm going with Coach O. I think that wow. we saw they fought against Alabama and probably should have won that game. I'm going to pick LSU over Arkansas. Razorbacks. Picked them last week. I'm going to keep riding with them. Did they win or they beat Mississippi they State? They beat Mississippi State because uh, Mississippi State does not have a kicker, and Mike Leach has made that abundantly clear that he has an issue with their kicking game. Gross. Um, man. The, out of all the games, this is the one. The most, like, I get it, between yeah. two 500 teams almost. I'm going to pick Arkansas. Woo pig. Woo pig. Mississippi State LSU's at Auburn. going to be out of gas after that effort. That's fair. Mississippi State at Auburn, the game we're all going to be at. I think it could be a pretty high-scoring game, but I'm going to pick Auburn, and you guys don't have to give a score, but I am saying Auburn 31, Mississippi State 20. Still going back on the score, but I think Auburn takes care of business at home. 31-20, you said? Yes. 
which I think will be a missed extra Cover. point and not uh, because <laughs> I don't know how many field goals not Mississippi field goals. State's going to kick. Uh, give me – I'm going to pick Auburn. I'm going to pick Auburn. Uh, we'll go 30 to – 24 or something like that yeah i think it could be a pretty close game i think the tigers win i think uh i think they can bounce back this is they have they'll have plenty of plays to get this figured out i think you know they could have 80 plus 90 plays uh, on offense um they just the offense just has to show up but auburn has shown so far this season the ability to bounce back from bad performances uh and i think it can do that and at home I think it's got a good chance of winning this game. If it was at home, it was, if it was on the road it, in cowbells and night game and all that, I don't know. Mm. Uh, but at home, I'm going to pick Auburn. I think that's fair. Well, we will be there for that game on Saturday. We will bring you a uh, post-game podcast once that's all wrapped up. Thanks, for everybody, for listening to us for 50 episodes worth. Yeah, brother. Yeah, wow. it's, it's wild. But thanks for supporting. Thanks for listening. Make sure and share, subscribe, let everybody know about the podcast. We'll get out of there on that note. For Jake Weiss and Justin Lee, I'm Jordan Hill. Until next time, take care.